graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left. It still can be rearranged to be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read, your life's actions to reash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? Stay the fuck at home! Your podcast will fail. fail. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, the guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Glow and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And, uh, Paul, I mean, we were supposed to record about a month ago. And, uh, that night, I believe, what, you fell asleep by accident. And, uh, you know, then I said, then, the, then we tried to the call. Next day, next day, we're going to go to record. And it turns out that, uh, my father passed away. And like, you know, and, 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 and I don't want to like bring everybody down, uh, with the whole passing of my dad. I'm still sort of processing it because, you know, it was just, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, my dad was only 72 and I knew he wasn't in the best of health. Um, you know, dad liked to drink his beer and that was always a thing. Like, you know, it came down to my, my dad had the Anheuser-Busch A <laughs> tattooed on his arm for Christ's sake. With it, with the eagle carrying two six packs and like, you know, Budweiser, like uh, synonymous with my dad. And, um, it just feels kind of weird, like recording now because, you know, my, I knew my dad listened to the podcast and it was one of those things where it was sort of our communication, you know, like it was sort of like I knew he listened to it and he would comment on it. And of course he did not like our Trump bashing. Because, you know, my dad, for the lack of a better term, is a Trump supporter. Uh, let's let's, you know, but let's not hold that against him. And uh, and 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 you even you met my dad, right? When when uh, when we went down to New yeah, York Comic Con. Yeah, I met him that one time. And um, see, so, you know, it's it's just been, you know, I mean, it feels weird recording a podcast knowing that he's not going to listen to it. And, you know, like I said, it was part of our communication because he would learn, you know, he since we didn't communicate on a regular basis doing this podcast was sort of uh a way of letting him know what's going on with my life because my dad was sort of school you know you know you know how men you know men don't share their feelings men don't talk about the shit that's bothering them i mean you know when my father passed it was a surprise to me i mean i you know it wasn't a surprise because i knew he wasn't in the best of health because he would mention like you know my my dad was the kind of person that you know he went to the doctor you know twice a week you know every time i spoke to my dad he was always on his way to a doctor's appointment or just coming back from a doctor's appointment so i knew he wasn't in the best of health and he didn't really take care of himself he liked to drink his beer and uh you know i mean he was kind of active in his last couple of years i mean he he liked to do um kayaking but that was i mean before pandemic before the pandemic and shit like that and you know you know not that my dad my dad i don't want to say sedentary because it wasn't sedentary but you know, he wasn't a big active guy. He liked to do archery and shit like that and, uh, or bow hunting. And, uh, you know, I know that kept him busy. It's not really enough of an activity like that sort of like keeps your body uh, active and stuff like that. So, you know, so he passed when like the day we were going to record and, uh, you know, it's just been a, it's been a rough, 
it's been a rough week cuz you know a rough excuse me a rough month uh you know cuz my dad had asked me and this was you know a while back he's like you know when i die you know i don't want you to for the lack of a better term advertise it on facebook i don't want people to know that i died until after i'm in the ground you know cuz he didn't want cuz then let's be honest he didn't want people coming to his his wake or his funeral service or anything like that um you know, cause you get, you know, what if you ever been to, you know, you ever been to like a funeral or something like that? And you got these people that come up and they show, you know, they show their face and everything like that. But like, you know, you should have shown your face when I was still alive. Sort of a deal. Like, why come now and be the hypocrite and, 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 and you know, cry your cries and, and, you know, when you should have been there while I was still alive. And I get that. I totally understand that. And, uh, when my dad passed, I was, and trust me, I was bracing myself for, the big, like, you know, the wake for four days or three or four days and then the, the funeral. Uh, his wife basically made the executive decision that they're not, there's not going to be a wake. She didn't want to see, you know, see my dad's friends and shit like that. Cause, you know, my dad, he ran with a couple of different types of people. He was parts of the Knights of Columbus, Knights of Columbus. He had a lot, he had biker friends. He had cop friends and, you know, and then you got to deal with all that shit for the next couple of days of all these guys who you don't know who the fuck they are coming up to you and saying, you know, my, you know, my condolences. And I mean, I, they mean well, and, and I'm not disparaging that, but you know, you don't want to fucking have to deal with it. So she basically made the executive decision that, you know, he's going to go from the coroner's office to the, to the church for a mass and then right in the ground. So I was put in a position because my dad said, you know, he had basically told me, he goes, look, don't. You know, because my dad knows how how I am on 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 social media and stuff like that, and he knew he 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 knew for me to like basically keep my mouth shut because <laughs> he didn't want to fucking have to deal with people. So you know, and I announced his death like 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 a week and a half after his actual passing. You know, he was well in the ground; he was already in the ground over a week, and uh, you know, and I kind of got some backlash from family members and shit like that. Like you know, you should have told us and. And, uh, you know, and my mom has heard it also, you know, they've kind of, they've gone to my, you know, they didn't even come to me. They go to my mom about it. So, you know, it just, you know, and I'm trying to respect the old man's wishes. You know, if the shoe was on the other foot, I would understand, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, someone didn't want me there. Fine. They, then I'm not going to, you know, that's their wishes and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's just fucking really taking me fucking hard because, and I don't know if I like, uh, I certainly didn't talk about this on a podcast before, but. You know, being I was a second child. I'm I'm the I'm the baby of the family. You know, one day my mom and I got into a real, real, real deep conversation, and like my mom revealed to me that like I was not that I was an accident. That that like my dad didn't want any kids. He, well, he didn't want any more kids. They had my older brother. My older brother was the golden child, and my father did. My father was like, okay, that's it. You know, my brother and my father, like my father's senior, my brother's junior, you know, took on the name. And so when I was born or whatever, like I wasn't, you know, he wasn't not, you know, I, I mean, he loved me and he took care of me and shit like that. But like my dad didn't want another kid. He had his junior and that's it, you know. And, you know, with my dad, I was always sort of like, you know, and I kind of felt that growing up. My older brother was the golden child. He, you know, he was given, you know, you know. He could, he could, he, he could do no wrong in my father's eyes. You know what I'm saying? And you know, if my brother hit me, you know, if I went to my dad and said, "Oh, you know, my my brother hit me," my dad would say, "Well, what did you do to get hit?" <laughs> you know, and um, uh, you know, he was kind of given run of the roost. You know, it was the cock of the walk and and stuff like that. You know, when it came time for like schooling, like my father put my brother through. My father helped put my brother through college. And my brother in turn became a cop, you know, and my father was always into law enforcement and shit like that. And, you know, I wasn't put through college, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My, you know, I was, I, but I got a year and a half through community college and that was it. Uh, you know, my, uh, you know, I, 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 I always felt like a second class citizen, uh, you know, to my dad, you know, I became a correction officer because like, I didn't want to be a fucking correction officer. I didn't want to do any of that shit. I always wanted to be in something creative. And, uh, you know, I kind of did that to kind of please my dad and, you know, and I, and I know it broke his heart, like when I left corrections, you know, because I got with my daughter's mother who was you know, an inmate under my custody and shit like that. I know I broke my father's heart when that happened. And I, you know, I've always felt like a big fuck up, a big disappointment in my dad's eyes. And it kind of like, you know, and it breaks my heart that I'm never going to have a chance to kind of like really mend that fence and really kind of, you know, 
you know, and I, and like, and it's not, and I don't feel like my dad hated me or anything like that. I don't. He loved me and he took care of me and he put a roof over my head and everything like that. Um, but you know, I, I, I'll always, you know, now I, now that he's gone, I'm always going to have that kind of like lingering that like I never had a chance to like really make him proud of me. Like I always wanted to do something and like, you know, make a movie or do something. And there's still a chance for me to do that, but you know, he's not going to be around. Even if like, you know, I, I do something tomorrow that's absolutely brilliant. You know, he's not going to be around for it. He's not going to be around to say, like, you know, Chris, I'm proud of you and shit like that. That kind of, that has me fucked up uh, thinking about it. Um, you know, it's funny, like, when, after he passed, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, don't, you know, a- am I that, like, uh, predictable? Whatever, people, like, you know, don't go drinking, don't drink yourself into a fucking, you know, coma and shit like that. And I'm like, and I mean, and I don't get me wrong, I like to drink and I guess I get that from my dad or whatever, but, like, you know, was I that kind of like predictable <laughs> that, you know, in a moment of like deep, deep stress that I feel like that. And, you know, and the funny thing is, you know, I've, I've had, you know, I've had a six pack in honor of my dad. OK, yeah, I hit the bar one night, but, you know, not smashed enough where like I couldn't drive or anything. And I had and I had a bottle of wine that I've had from like before my father passed that I just happened to have in my fridge. So I didn't. uh you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't go off the deep end with alcohol and shit like that. Like, I just, I had two separate people like, you know, don't go crazy. I'm not going to go crazy. And, uh, you know, and I look at it because me and my dad are physic, we're physically alike a lot. You know, like I'm shaped like my dad. I look like my dad. I sound like my dad. You know, I see that the age that he died is 72. And I'm like, does that put like a fucking, you know, countdown timer on my, you know, if I don't get fucking hit by a truck or something like that before then. You know, I kind of like, do I have 28 years left? Is that because, you know, there's that much of a difference, you know, so it sort of has me sort of, just, you know, contemplating my own mortality and shit like that. And, you know, it's, and it's, you know, I'm a single father, you know, God forbid something happens to me. My daughter, you know, she doesn't fucking, you know, the next step would be, you know, one of her aunts or uncles to, to take care of her. And, you know, like it really bothers me. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to think about it. But, you know, I, you know, I lost my daughter's mother last year. And it's not, you know, not that her and I were together, but, you know, I became full time, full custody parent, uh, you know, no real support. And, you know, and, you know, now I lost my dad and, you know, Raven, my daughter, she said, um, she said, and she did say it to be mean, but she said, she said, dad, now you know how it feels. And it took me a second. I'm like, what do you mean? What, is, what does it mean? It's like, now you know how it feels to lose a parent. And I was like, holy shit, <laughs> this is coming from an 11 year old. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I-, I love my dad. And, you know, like years ago, you know, I had that episode where I had like my mom on one episode and I had a chance, you know, interviewed her and shit like that. And I kind of, you know, I never, I always wanted to have an episode with my dad. And, uh, you know, just once again, even just for posterity reasons, even if like I could play the audio years later and, you know, play it for Raven. It's, you know, this was your grandfather. Cause I mean, at 11, at, a, at 11, even though she's very smart, she doesn't, you know, really grasp, you know, and she didn't, and she didn't have, she didn't, she wasn't around him enough. You know, my dad was sort of, he was a type of person where he would, he would seclude himself and, 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 you know, there were, there were things that went in my, my father's life that I didn't know about until years later. And there's probably, my father probably has more secrets that he took to his grave that I won't, that I don't fucking know about. And nothing big like, you know, like he has other kids or anything like that. But, you know, like, you know, my father, my parents got divorced in like 91 and my father remarried in 92. Like he married the woman that he was cheating on my mother with six months later. And at least, you know, hey, look, if you're going to cheat on your wife <laughs> that you had two kids with, at least if you cheat on her, at least you married the woman that you cheated on her. With. And that, you know, my parents divorced. That fucked me up because, you know, my parents, you know, I thought, I thought we were, me and my brother I thought we came from like a traditional family and, you know, traditional in the old school sense. And, you know, and then when my parents got divorced, you know, that shattered my fucking world. And, uh, you know, but I, I mean, like I say, you know, and now mind you, you know, my father remarried in 92. I didn't even know he had a wife until 99, until my, my older brother had a kid. And like my dad, I guess my dad wanted her to be part of all of our lives or whatever, you know, with my older brother, you know, the golden child having. And then and my, and my brother's son is is my father, the third. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that name's, you know, there's three generations of cologne men with the same. When it was only when my brother had a son, my father revealed that he he had a wife all these years, seven years, seven or eight years. I didn't even know this woman existed. And my nephew was born. My father say, oh, by the way, I have, a, you know, and it's sort of, 
you know, shit like that kind of fucked me. So, you know, I have to deal with it. And I'm seeing a therapist now, so everybody, you know, I'm not going to hurt myself or do anything stupid like that. But, uh, you know, it's shit like that. You know, God knows what other secrets my dad took to his grave that, that I don't know about. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of fucked up about it. And I'm, I'm going to be all right. I'm not going to hurt myself or anything like that. I just, you know, I have to, I have to work through all these fucking issues. And I loved my dad and I respected him and, and, and I looked up to him when I, you know, as a child looks up to their parent, you know, like they're fucking, like they're a god and they could move the fucking sky if they wanted to. And so, you know, it's just, it's just, it's got me a little fucked up. And once again, I mean, I don't want to bum, bum out anybody from the podcast. I mean, we haven't done an episode in two months. We have to put out something. We have to put out, you know, shit, I'm paying for these server fees for, <laughs> I'm not paying these server fees for nothing. So, uh, I guess we could move on. I, you know, I kind of told you before the episode, I kind of wanted to just do a little chunk on my dad and, you know, and that was sort of it. You know, I just, you know, I'm put in a weird position where, you know, I just, I, you know, I wanted, you know, there's so much stuff I wanted to do with my dad and, you know, mend, you know, and, you know, and and parts and other people of my family where like, I kind of want to mend fences with. And it's like, now that's never going to happen. You know, even if my, all my, even if everyone in my family got started getting to getting along tomorrow and we all got together and sat down at a table like dad's not going to be and it kind of you know that fucks me up so yeah uh, yeah <laughs> so I, let's move on before you know you know but i just i wanted to kind of just and dad i love you and I, you know <laughs> i you know i, I wish i could have made you proud of me when, you know it is what it is um i guess well that's lighter... what that's that's what uh what now is for so you just got to keep doing what you're doing right now so yeah and sort of you know return to normal it does feel weird that once again like you know putting out an episode knowing that he's not, i mean of course you know you know if you're a religious person oh here's it now my dad was deeply religious i wasn't i'm not um you know but at the very least like i know like you know and it's not and it's not like saying i'm religious or anything but if, <clears throat> if religion brings you comfort and you're in pain then you know hopefully his his last hours or his last days or whatever however long it was before he finally passed was filled with comfort from his religion because he was religious so you know even though i'm not you know i'll i'll at least respect his his beliefs and his his wishes and stuff like that you know it's just all <laughs> but let's move on um mm-hmm. all right so what do you want to talk about uh if you want to your 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 work situation is going to change soon for the better or one less well <laughs> i mean it's allowing me to record tonight so there you go <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean i'll be down to one job after this weekend coming up so that's a good thing and then um i won't be like losing my mind because you know i i guess if you're going to talk about this i might as well talk about this too Mm -hmm. you know it's when you when you lose your job Mm -hmm. and you've worked at a job for like eight years and i guess this is my podcast therapy (laughs) (laughs) um you you sit there and you 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 look at yourself and you go well, first of all, I haven't even had any time to really process this because, you know, I have a kid. I have to make sure everything's taken care of. Mm. Um, but, you know, and, and one day I will do a podcast about what happened. And some of you are going to be pretty much like everybody else, including yourself, and be like, wow, that is fucked up. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's just been I haven't been able to kind of process that whole thing. And, you know, when this all went down. My father was in the hospital and my father still is, I mean, he's kind of, he's not really in the hospital for anything like terminal or anything per se, but like mm-hmm. my father has, uh, dementia. So he's deteriorating pretty quickly when it comes to his mind. And it's just, you know, I haven't had a chance to go see him because of all of this, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, when this all went down, I had a kid, so it kind of just, it, it just, was like you don't you don't have time to kind of process things so now that i'm going to be down to one job for at least a little while i'm going to be like kind of being able to breathe a little bit Mm -hmm. per se and try to kind of process everything that's been going on but it's you know it's been a kind of a weird ride for me because you know you go from not knowing if you're going to have a job to going back to that job to all of a sudden oh by the way you're done like, and it's one of those things where it's like, and then you don't get told what it, you know, you don't get told what you did wrong. And it's like, how do I, how do I, how do I improve myself if you don't tell me what it is? Yeah. Especially you when we li- when we're living in a time where like uh, people, all these companies are saying, oh, people don't want to work 
but then you're going to let somebody go who who's been there for eight years. Yeah. You know, and that's that's where, you know, it just it's just very painful for me, you know, and it, and it's and it's one of those things where it's like you have to rebuild yourself and, you know, I you know, it's it's just a it's a very shitty situation. I mean, I'm I'm doing well, so it's not like I'm not, you know, I'm not okay, but you know, dealing with that, I haven't been able to deal with that. So, you know, it's just it's been an interesting time, you know. One day I'm going to kind of talk about it on this podcast and, you know, make my company look bad because they will look bad for what they did. Mm. Um, but um I'm just going to kind of leave it there because, you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of like how you were like, I'm not going to put this up about my dad on, on social media. I, I don't really want to talk about it, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's just, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I, I have enjoyed doing what I'm doing now. I mean, I, I can't say that I'm going to be doing what I'm doing right now because obviously I want to get paid more. I don't want to get paid what I'm getting paid right now. <laughs> um, which I mean, if you guys have listened, to what I was saying when I was working at Planet Fitness, I mean, that was that was a whole different situation, you know. I mean, I didn't really hate the job. It was just, you know, you say that you're going to pay me this and make me this, but then I'm something completely different and getting paid this. It's, you know, it was one of those things where I'm like, no, I, you know, this if this isn't going to be, you know, um, if this isn't going to be what I'm supposed to be hired for, then we're we're not having a conversation. Yeah, you know what I mean. So. And again, I didn't I didn't hate the people that I worked with and I and I liked what I was doing. It was just, you know, like if you're not going to pay me more money, what what's what's the point? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm doing well myself. I'm not I still have to deal with that. But, you know, and hopefully I can do that. But yeah, I mean, 2021 has been a very not a very good year for me, to be honest yeah. with you, in that sense. I mean, I have a beautiful child obviously mm. so i mean it's not been all bad but it's just like i'm just sitting here going you know can mm. we can something can something good happen for us? <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like jesus fucking christ i mean it's bad enough people aren't fucking like look i'm not the i'm not the fucking preacher man but mm-hmm. I, I just i don't know about you chris but i don't have any remorse for these people that quit their jobs over not taking a vaccine like i don't get how we went from we're requiring every single max vaccine vaccine um mm. in you know everybody's required to have it to oh i'm not going to take the covid shot you know and i'm just like i'm like and, and are you just are, are you people just that stupid like you know if you're caring for somebody else's loved one you should be taking the shot i don't care i don't care who you are if you're a doctor you're a nurse or whatever take the fucking shot yeah. you know what i mean and I've heard, you know, I've heard some differing, uh, some interesting um, tidbits from like doctors and nurses that, you know, we, we don't have enough information. I'm like, well, then why would you tell people that it's OK to take it? Oh, well, we're under pressure. I'm like, I wouldn't care if I'm under pressure. If I don't think that somebody's going to need to take it, then I'm going to tell them not to take it. It's the same thing that I brought up, uh, I think, a couple podcasts ago where it's like, you know, when when my girl actually had had my son the nurses said listen like if you're gonna get the shot just don't do the johnson and johnson one (laughs) because we the johnson and johnson one could affect you in negative ways Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so if they're gonna be honest why can't other doctors just be honest if there's something wrong which by the way there's nothing wrong with it i haven't heard anybody die from the goddamn vaccine other than the johnson and johnson one Mm -hmm. so you know it's i don't know i'm just i'm getting really annoyed by people because it's like you can take the shot. You can go get a booster. Just do it. Because yeah. the, the the more you know, if you do it, then there's we're not going to go into a lockdown. At some point, there's going to be another lockdown. And if this gets bad, and it's just it's not going to be anybody's fault, but you know, everybody else's fault. You know yeah. what I mean? It's going to be people's fault, not our fault. Yeah, it blows so, my mind when they're like like you know, because the the numbers have actually gone up, or at least in New York State, the numbers have gone up recently. Like we've, yeah. we've had a, a surge and I'm like, who the fuck, you know, but, uh, you know, and it's like, you know, and I know there's those fucking hard heads out there. They're like, I'm not going to get the vaccine, you know, and it's like, just fucking get it. Like, I'd rather 
And and look at it, I'm I'm a selfish evil scumbag. I'll admit it in a heartbeat. But like I'd rather like I'd rather get the shot and like something let's just say, you know, the shot fucking ten years from now I get fucking cancer or whatever. Let's just say okay, fine, I get cancer, but yeah, I got cancer because I was trying to do the right thing for fucking society by right. getting the fucking shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and of course, I look up, obviously I don't want to get sick or anything like that, but it's like, you know, vaccines, this stuff is, is, te- these things are tested like crazy. There's, there's peer review. There's all types, you know, there's, there's, there, you know, the, everybody's on top of everything. And, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a redundant set of systems in place to keep things from being, and of course, could, could, could everybody, you know, but if that's the case, then, hey, then we're all getting cancer in 10 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's you know, the that's truth. The, you, know, yeah. you know, if, if, if we're going to get fucked, then let's all get fucked at once. Uh, let's all get fucked as one society, as opposed to these people that are fighting for, on like, on, on no fucking, you know, on bullshit conspiracy theories and, and, and conspiracy, you know, and it's like, you know, trust, you know, you, you know, I think if there was an issue with these fucking shots, some medical person, some high ranking medical person would have said something by now. And I don't think there's a big conspiracy in exactly. the person, you know, the pro, if a person speaks out, then, you know, they're going to be blackballed or whatever, blacklisted. No, if, if, you know, if something was, if something was that fucking horrible, then, you know, people would have come out and said it. And, you know, and then these people are like, oh, well, if, you know, these young, healthy people or people who are relatively healthy, like, oh, I don't need this shot. Yeah, motherfucker, it's not for you. You getting the shot is so you don't fucking pass it on to someone who may be immune, you know, compromised, immune and compromised. And it's well, a, and it, it's so you selfish fucking prick. Just get the fucking shot already. Right. <laughs> and but, you know, for me, it's not even just get the shot, make yourself, you know, and protect others. It's, you know, I have a five month year old over here that, you know, isn't, you know, I, I, I can't get him sick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's why I wear a mask. That's why I got the shot. So I don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's that's what that's what kills me is it's like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't wearing I stopped wearing a mask because the numbers went down. I'm wearing a mask again because people because the numbers have gone up so much. I don't know what it is in Monroe County, but it's just like I don't want to take the chance. You know what I mean? And I mean, we're coming into the winter season, so it won't be as bad because people won't be outside. Um and they'll be indoors, but people, when people are like, you know, when they're in like a movie theater, for example, or they're, in, they're, you know, down in Times Square and all congregated together, it's going to be bad, dude. It's just going to get worse <laughs> and worse until people fucking do what they're supposed to do. So um, I, I wear my mask and, and like, I, I feel weird now in public without my mask. Like certain places, like if I have a doctor's appointment, fine. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely, you have to wear your doctor's mask. When you go into the uh, the, uh, the building, uh, but they give you know. Other than that, you know, when I'm when I'm out in public, you know, the thing is shopping, and I I I've got I I like wearing my mask. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy. You know, I, I I don't I don't want people to see me. I I like the anonymity. You know, as, as much as I do the podcast and yada yada yada, and you know, I want to be famous. You know, when I'm out and about, I like having my face covered. I don't like I don't like strangers seeing my face. You know, I wear my mask, and and sometimes it'll be like. I'll be at the gas station and I'm just running in the gas station to grab something and like I'll leave my mask in the car and like I like I kick myself as soon as I realize it like I, I'm don't get me wrong I'm too lazy to go back to the car and get it but you know like I get and I'm like oh fuck I'm around these fucking <laughs> these savages fucking breathing their air <laughs> when I should have my right. mask on you know what I'm saying because I I hate people <laughs> and I and, and quite frankly I kind of like wearing the mask because I I want it to piss off people who don't like people wearing masks and luckily like. I mean, New York is pretty progressive, so like, you know, it's not like you're not getting confronted on when you are wearing a mask, like, you know. But I mean, there are places in this country where if you are you wear a mask, people like literally ask you why don't you, why do you have a mask on? And it's none of your fucking business. If I want to wear my mask, let me wear my fucking mask, you know. And 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 thank goodness we don't have that. But I'm like, I'm waiting for the day where like someone asks me why I have my mask on, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying because because you know I, I'm gonna lay into that motherfucker if they have to. Um, and, and when it comes to like the kids vaccines, I, I've already scheduled my daughter. She had, you know, it's, it's right around the corner, you know, like it's uh, the minute they said it was. And then the funny thing is that like, uh, like I, I had, I had written a, I'd sent a, uh, my, you know, the way my, uh, my daughter's doctor works and way my doctor works is I, I can send them emails. There's a whole system you sign into. So like I sent my doctor an email, uh, I sent her doctor an email about like, 
As soon as this shit is, as soon as these uh, shots are, are, are available for kids, I want my daughter to get her shot. And, uh, and like, and like literally like that day on the website, they were like, you can schedule your child for a shot. And so, you know, I went to the system and so she scheduled. So, I mean, and it was even then, like right out the gate, it was like a week or two away. And I'm like, well, I mean, look, luckily so far things have been gone good so far, but she's going to get her shot and she's going to get her shot before Thanksgiving, you know, before we go and see family. Because we're, you know, we're gonna brought, we're gonna go see family on Thanksgiving, and so you know, at least you know, I have a little bit of peace of mind that you know, like, you know, I already lost my dad. You know, my mom is not in great, my mom is not in the greatest of health either. You know, my mom checks a lot of the boxes of people that are at risk. You know, heart disease and high blood pressure and diabetes. You know, shit that you know is bad enough being old, then you have these extra conditions on top of it. So you know, I mean, of course, my daughter has seen my mom. Uh, you know since my mom got vaccinated but you know it's still there's still that you know i i I, you know i want everybody to get their fucking shot (laughs) and uh you know and then and well kind of a little off topic uh you know the last time my daughter did see my mother was i was down in new york city because i went to new york comic-con and uh since the last episode we the last time we recorded was two months ago i've actually did go to comic-con i'm not going to go into those uh, i i have all the notes and i'm going to save it because i want to record it for posterity uh, you know, I am going to go over Comic Con, but not, not this episode. You know, my dad's thing is obviously uh, weighing a lot more in my heart. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my daughter saw my mom, you know, about a month ago when I went to uh, New York Comic Con, and so um, you know, and it just once again, I'm just it just blows my mind when you people that are still resisting and you know, and it's like fucking, you, how fucking selfish can you be? And you know, we get we get a million vaccinations for everything else. You know, when you're a kid and you go to your doctor. And, you get a vaccine for this, vaccine for that. Nobody, nobody's fucking, nobody's getting autism. Nobody's getting this. Nobody's getting that. Just take the fucking shot. You know, it just, is, it just shows you how fucking, you know, and I'm a selfish person. I'm the first to admit I'm a selfish person. But when it comes to shit like this and you're talking about like global pandemic and shit like that, I'm like, Hey, okay. And now it's time to fucking for me to swallow my shit and, and take the fucking shot. And, and while we're on topic uh, about that, Sort of in, 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 in relation to your old podcast, your other podcast and, 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 uh, sort of a, a friend of a friend of the show, uh, uh, Mr. Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> the football player, cause, uh, we had, um, Adam, Adam Geddes as a guest on the podcast or not a guest on the podcast, but we, I interviewed him at, at Comic Con, uh, the football player. I guess he went to college with uh, Aaron Rodgers. They bunked together. They, and, you know, in the past, I had admired Aaron Rodgers because, like, a known fact that he's an anime fan. And, uh, you know, he was into anime and like that. And so, you know, even though I don't follow football and I can give two shits about football, I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. Aaron Rodgers, he, he likes anime. That means he's pretty cool. And now they're coming out with this stuff where, like, even though he may have not flat out lied, but, like, he kind of, like, bent the truth or admitted omitted certain facts to make it make it sound like he had the vaccine or he was treated, you know, but he wasn't, or he hasn't had like a, you know, he didn't get the traditional vaccine shots and he's playing it off like he did. And so, you know, you done messed up a, a <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and I want to like him. I mean, he's an anime fan and shit like that, but now it's sort of like, you know, and then you're sending, you know, football, as much as I hate <clears throat> sports, football is such a large and influential, uh, thing and you're kind of giving the the green light to the wrong fucking people saying like, oh, well, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't get a shot, then why then I shouldn't have to get the shot the year. You know, you know, you're you are, for the lack of a better term, a role model, you know, and then you're, if you're and, you know, apparently Aaron Rodgers is a great football player from what I understand. I don't watch football, but, you know, people like him and admire him and shit like that. And it's like, you know, for him to like, you know, not get the vaccine or, or you know, say, you know, like kind of like he kind of. He played semantics and fucking, you know, found out that he wasn't actually getting the vaccine. Like, dude, man. Cause let me tell you, cause you know, anime <sighs> fans dude. and you know, let me tell you, even at Comic Con, you know, we will, and I won't get into the deep details about it. I'm saying, but everyone at Comic Con, of course, you, they wouldn't let you in without a mask, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, anime fans, you know, I would, you would think fans of sci-fi people, these are, these, I mean, I hate to say that they're, they're smarter people. <laughs> I mean, I hate to sound, you know, these, these are people who, who, who like science fiction because they like science, you know, and, 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 and how is it I could spend four days in a building with thousands of strangers? You know, and, and, and once again, this year I didn't, I had no Comic Con, no, con, no con crud. You know, we've made jokes about that in the past. I've never gotten con crud from New York Comic. But here we are, the year after a fucking pa- a global pandemic, but enough responsible people 
did their thing. And to go to Comic Con, you needed to show proof. You needed your you needed your card so you can get your little bracelet. So you know, and everyone had their bracelets. You know, but it just it's it, you know he's sending the wrong message to people when he's like, oh, you know, I did you know I did my own research. You fucking big dummy. You know, <laughs> throw yeah. the fucking ball and get your fucking shot. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I was just sort of, that was sort of, uh, you know, that just pissed me off. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we get to the, the second half of the I show? I was just going to say, I was just going to say, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> oh. dude should be suspended. Fuck him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you, you lied about not being vaccinated. Like, how do you even, how, do, how is he even allowed to still play? Like, I, I don't get that. Like, the NFL wants to be strict about shit, but you know, I, I hate to I hate to to be like one of those people that's like, well, if it was a black player, but if it oh. was a black player, I think he probably he or she, well, he obviously in this occasion <laughs> would be would probably get suspended for a couple games. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's a good point. you know what I'm saying? Like he, he's a white dude that just went up on a podcast and said, and then he apologized because he knew he fucked up. <laughs> Like, dude, like, I, I, I don't get it. How, how does, how does, just because you're Aaron Rodgers, it doesn't make you immune, hint, hint, um, <laughs> to fucking being suspended. Like, I, if I were the commissioner, I would have been like, look, I'm suspending you for a couple games because you can't fucking, you can't even fucking admit that you did it. I'm setting an example. I'm suspending you because now what's going to happen is these other players are going to go, well, you didn't suspend Aaron Rodgers, so why would you suspend me? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the Bills players, and you know, I find it funny because, like, look, there's no secret. I like the Buffalo Bills now, <laughs> um, but like um, Colt Beasley, who was one of the players, he's very outspoken about not taking the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Um, if you notice, he went very quiet, <laughs> and they weren't throwing him the ball, Chris. Now, the last couple games, he was actually getting the ball, so they they. He probably made up in some way, fashion, or form, <laughs> but he's been very quiet. Why is that? Because the coaching staff went to him and went, listen, dude, we're not throwing you the fucking ball until you start fucking stopping, stop about your whole fucking vaccine bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because, oh, by the way, you're probably going to be off the team if you keep this shit up. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, if I, I, I hate to be that dude where, you know, if this was a black player, but. I get the feeling if it was if it was like Cam Newton, for mm-hmm. example, yeah, dude would have been suspended. Not even not even kidding you. Even if it was just for a game or two, dude would have been suspended. Yeah, just just yeah. And a, by the way, made an by example. the way, I'm not I'm not saying like suspend him for the rest of the season. I'm saying you, this is strike one. You get suspended for a game or two. Send a fucking message. That's it. That's all you got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this isn't this isn't hard. This isn't hard at all. Just suspend the fucker. And send the message. That's all. It's another problem with COVID, unfortunately. We, we're sending really stupid messages, so. Yeah. But we won't go into that because we'll be talking about this for another hour and <laughs> we sleep. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, with that, uh, we'll be back with more Dick and Fart Jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc., 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this <laughs> No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get out of it. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. 
watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did be you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Sion. And we're back. All right, Paul. So let's get to the nerdy news. Once again, I have tons of notes from last week, or for over last month, actually, about stuff, you know, the, the DC uh, fandom and the, and the Black Adam trailer and the, the teasers of uh, Batman and uh, the new Flash movie. Jesus, you're going way far back. Yeah, exactly. Jesus, way far back. God damn. Um, the, the trailer for the Resident Evil movie, which was basically, uh, you know, like they're starting to, they're actually trying to make the movie look like the video games. Welcome, uh, Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, uh, Many Saints of Newark. It was a, a, a dud of a movie, and I'm kind of glad because the people that really wanted to like that movie were like disappointed because the movie was sort of woke for the lack of a better term, and I like, I like that people are pissed off that it was a woke movie. Uh, Norm MacDonald, uh, you know, uh, Norm MacDonald was the voice of, on the show, The Orville. Uh, he was the voice of that, like, green glob thing. And, uh, you know, but it, unfortunately, Norm MacDonald passed away, but they said that they already got all his recordings. Uh, his recordings for the, for the work was done. So when they have the next season on Hulu, um, they'll be able to have his, uh, his performances. Um, but let's speak about let's while it's still fresh in our minds as we're recording this we were literally probably an hour ago or two hours ago we saw uh the worldwide release of the the last before the before the movie finally comes out the last Spider-Man No Way Home trailer mm-hmm. which was you know filled with revelations I guess would be the best way to put it and I, and I kind of like I like because obviously we all know what the fuck's going to happen. Well, not all know, but we all know what the big twist is going to be or what's going to be added to this movie. But I like the fact that they kind of kept that they, they still, even though this is the, from what I understand, the last trailer that they're going to release, you know, we still haven't seen uh, Andrew Garfield. We still haven't seen Tobey Maguire. But I'm, I kind of, I, I like that they didn't do that. I, 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 I like the fact that they didn't show, show them, even um, though we all know what's going to happen. Because I want to go into the movie, even though I have it in my mind, I'm going to, you know, I want to kind of like let it fall out of my mind. So when it happens, when I watch the movie, you know, I could actually, you know, pop when I get to the right part, you know, I'm like, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So Maguire, here comes Andrew Garfield. You know, we're, we're, Actually, now it's after midnight, so we're like literally a month away from from the movie coming out. So, you know, uh, I'll have a month to kind of purge it from my mind (laughs) before we get a chance to purge. (laughs) Maybe not the best words to use, but yes, purge. (laughs) Purge it from my mind. But um, in the trailer, we see and, you know, the the two obvious ones right off the bat from the last trailer that were kind of spoiled was, you know, uh, Green Goblin and Doc, Doc, Doc Octopus. I mean, that was... You know, we we heard the laugh of the Green Goblin. We saw the the Goblin he bomb. Yeah, I, we heard the voice. You know, we saw Doc Ock. You know, and I like the fact that this was sort of that. You know, they're versions that we know, but they're kind of not. Like they're they're they look a little different. They sound a little not sound, a little, but you know, I think they're from other universes. But you know, they're not from like the direct movies think... that we saw. I think my my favorite part was where Doctor Octavius is like, "You're not Peter Parker." <laughs> he pulls the mask. I went, I went oh my god! <laughs> I'm like you're fucking killing me here. That's that's pretty awesome, and you know, once again, you know, the MCU is just killing it with like, you know, I guess you know, with the success of uh, of Into the Spider Verse, you know, they said, "Look, it, let's do this in a live action movie. Let's embrace the fact that there are other Spider Man movies out there that people know and people love." I mean, I wasn't the biggest Andrew Garfield. Uh, Spider-Man movies, and I, I, you know, clearly we've spoken plenty of times on how those movies aren't that great. But no. you know, when you kind of bring them into this universe, it's sort of like, and you know, it's it's so funny how like the MCU, like uh, like they did with like, okay, like an Endgame, they kind of had the whole scene where like Thor was sort of redeemed, like you know, like he he saw his mother for one last time, and when he traveled in the past or whatever, and. That whole scene sort of helped redeem Thor Part Two, because Thor Part Two was, quite frankly, not the great, not a good movie. And like, uh, in, in the most, you know, more, not the most recent, but one of the more recent movies, Shang Chi, you know, they had 
the, the, they had the, the bad guy in the movie was the actual Mandarin because in Iron Man 3, they gave us a bullshit uh, Mandarin that was sort of, you know, fake out that, you know, it was supposed to be, you know, it was a guy and he took the name of a, or of a terrorist and it turns out he was just put there as an actor and shit like that. So, like, you know, for the people that got upset, like, oh, man, you know, they fucked up the Mandarin. Well, then they go, OK, look, let's, you know, the MCU, like the Kevin Feige and, and his team or whatever, they sort of like, look, let's OK, we kind of fucked up the Mandarin. What can we do? Let's, okay, let's put him in the Shang-Chi movie and this will be the quote unquote real Mandarin. So they're kind of like fixing things later on. And I think like, you know, e- you know, even though, and there's people who don't like the Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man movies, they say it's like, it's too cartoony. It's too, you know, looks too much like a comic book, which is a weird thing to, which is yeah, a, that's weird a very weird thing to say for yeah. a comic movie. You know, and of course, you know, us, you know, I mean, I, I'm a diehard fan. I'm not, I did not like the, the guy, Andrew Garfield movies, but, I think they're gonna, they're, they're kind of like redeeming, like, okay, look, you know, let's, let's, let's embrace the past. <laughs> let's, and let, you know, let's, le- let's elevate it. Let's make it, you know, now there's a new twist. And then, you know, uh, surprisingly enough, we saw, um, uh, the lizard, uh, in the, in the trailer. Uh, Jamie Foxx. Uh, Jamie Foxx as, uh, as Electro. Electro. And then the whole thing is that, like, and don't be wrong, of, of those movies, I thought Jamie Foxx looked really cool as Electro. But I guess he didn't like that look. I hated him as when he was like a normal guy, when he was quote unquote normal. But now they had him where I guess he's just, he's just Jamie Foxx. He's not, he doesn't have blue skin or whatever, but, um, you see the, like, he uses his electric powers. And it sort of like makes the outline of the old classic 1960s Spider-Man, uh, the Electro Mask, where it looks like he has like a star on his face. Yeah. And, I mean, and of course, yes, that looks corny and it would be very hard to make that cool in real life, but they did it, you know, they, they have that like flash of electricity around his face that makes that star. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, that was kind of like a cool, like, you know, like, you know, you know, let Jamie Fox, Jamie Fox is cool. Let's not make him look uncool. <laughs> but, you know, like the flash of electricity in the shape of the old style mask was pretty fucking awesome. Um, and here's this, uh, another surprise was, was, uh, Sandman. That was a surprise. That wasn't in any of the other, I think they kind of hinted. I think they showed you know, Sandman. They were hinting it a lot and there was rumors that he was going to be in it, but, um, I mean, there's, there's still rumors that Mysterio may show up again. Um, you know, I, I think this was a good way for them to kind of basically bring in, like, because you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard the rumors where they've been trying to do, Sony's been trying to do this Sinister Six mm-hmm. kind of thing, and I think this is the perfect way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, for example, like, the Rhino's missing, even though, like, I think the Rhino was kind of a secondary character, so, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's not such a big deal. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where you're just kind of like, well, this is going to be very interesting to see what happens. And, you know, let's, the one thing that I, that I, that I've been saying on Twitter, and I think this is, this needs to be said here too, is, um, if let's say, let's, let's just play devil's advocate and just say that these, that these are leaks or they're not leaks. I should say they're not leaks. Wouldn't Sony come out and be like, yeah, by the way, they're not in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, they would. Marvel would do that too. And let's let's also face it here. Like, Sony dropped all this. Sony leaked it to somebody and then that person leaked it out because they want attention on this movie. Mm-hmm. This movie, and I'm telling you right now, I'm predicting this, will be the number one movie of the year. Oh, yeah. Because of this. There's, there's, no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no reason... Like there's there's a reason why there's not really anything in December because Spider Man is just gonna knock this out of the water. <laughs> it's gonna be the only movie to do that, mind you. Yeah. But you know, I mean, Sing Two might do it. I mean, the second trailer was a lot better than the first, but that first trailer kind of made it look like, eh. <laughs> I know animation, whatever. But you know, the kids love Sing, so whatever. What yeah. can I say? Um. Anyways, getting back to Spider Man, like uh, the only thing that I the only complaint I have about this trailer is it makes it like it makes like the first trailer if you've seen the first trailer chris like the first trailer kind of gave like a plot to what to to what's going on so obviously peter doesn't want everybody to know that he's spider-man so he talks to dr strange and dr strange tries to use a spell to reverse that and then all of a sudden 
instead of it reversing that, now we have all these multiverses converging on their universe. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes sense. I, I get it. it. It makes sense. It, it It's a good way to kind of play around and bring in these bad guys that you couldn't do in other Spider-Man movies. But, um, oh, yeah, by the way, Vulture is supposed to be in it, too, I think, at some point. Um, but, cool. yeah, it would be cool. Um, but the second trailer didn't was like kind of lacking on story. Like I kind of get why Spider-Man probably has the black Spider-Man suit. It's to fight Electro probably. So, I mean, that makes sense. Um, obviously the iron Spider-Man suit is to fight Dr. Octavius, but again, okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, okay, we get that. Um, but you're not really explaining like, I guess, um, like, for example, it seems like Dr. Octavius is going to be, like, a good guy, kind of. If you saw, like, in the beginning there, it kind of feels like he's going to be, like, a friend to Peter. Mm-hmm. But it's like, is that what's going on? Or, you know, so there's a lot of unanswered questions, I guess, is the, is, mm-hmm. is guess what's going on right now. And I'm just kind of like, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, it kind of makes sense, because think about it. If this, like, in the trailer, he pulls the mask off, it's like, you're not Peter Parker. Like, this Peter Parker, the Tom Holland Peter Parker isn't like the kid that betrayed him or whatever the case, you know, the the reason, you know, he's mad at Tobey Maguire, (laughs) Peter Parker. So like he can't, you know, and, and, you know, he was, and he was a mentor, you know, he was a mentor to Peter. So maybe it's sort of like, uh, you know, uh, I can, maybe I could be a mentor to this version of Peter Parker. Well, (laughs) I think it's more, I think it's more like this is a young Peter Parker. So he's kind of like, yeah, maybe I don't want to beat up on a kid. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like, like, and I can understand that. And, you know, it's also, you know, the one thing that keeps coming up in, into my mind, and it's kind of, it's kind of crazy because if you remember all the stories, like Spider-Man, after Spider-Man 3, they were going to continue doing Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire. Mm-hmm. But Sony decided to go in a different direction and do a younger Peter Parker. They fucked it up pretty bad. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm starting to, I was, I was thinking about this and I'm like, Marvel kind of saved Sony's ass and took their idea and did it the right way Yeah, absolutely. with all three of these movies. Like they took that young speeder, that young speeder, young (laughs) Peter Parker slash Spider-Man idea and took it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just great. I think that's wonderful. I, I really wish that, um, I still wish that the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man kind of got this treatment that this Spider-Man's getting because I would have loved to seen Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man uh, fighting with the Avengers and everything. I think that would have been awesome, but alas, that didn't happen. And you know, it, it's just going to be very, it's just going to be very interesting to see how they take Tom Holland's Spider-Man and continue him on. There, there's rumors that this might be the last film that he does, but I, I just don't. I don't see that happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't see that happening. I mean, quite possibly the last Spider-Man, Spider-Man film, like the last Spider-Man film, but not the last For time we see Toby, the last, the, not the last time we see Tom Holland. You know, right? He's gonna come back. He's he's young, and I think that's the reason they got a young character so they can. I mean, you know, like you know, like Robert Downey Jr. and 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 Chris Evans and 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 Chris Hemsworth, that you know that these you know they these guys were pumping out movies for like ten years, so you get a young Peter Parker, so. You know, we can follow him for the next decade, you know, where and you know, till like 20, 2026, you know, then he then he can bow out and then we'll get the Miles Morales movie or whatever. Oh, know. I think <laughs> I think this is going to be I think what's going to end up happening is um, as a result of I, I think what I was thinking about this, too, is I think this multiverse thing is going to set up the Miles Morales thing. I don't think like some people are like, Oh, he should, they should debut Miles Morales. They should do this. No, 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 no. I, I don't that's think you're, that's too much for this movie. Now, if you want to hint it, I don't mind if you hint it, that's, that's not a problem because if this is successful with the other two Spider-Men, I mean, what's to say that this isn't going to be, you know what I mean? Like we're not going to see, you know, Miles Morales, yeah. And all the other spider men and women that are involved as well. I mean, you know, that's that's kind of where they want to go. I mean, they did it in an animated one. They may try to do it in a live action one. Yeah. And I'm all for that for a live action one as long as they do it right. Um, please just let Marvel handle that, Sony, please. 
Can we just do that, please? Well, I mean, technically, they already did kind of hint at Miles Morales because, uh, what's his face from, uh, the community, uh, uh, Childish Gambino, or whatever his name is in real life, you know, you know, he was already in the Tom, he was in the first Spider-Man, uh, Homecoming. Right. It's just, you know, like they use like his real name, but that's the guy who becomes the Nightcrawler, who is Miles Morales' uncle. So. Technically, they've already kind of hinted at Miles Morales, or at least, you know. The, the I mean, I, I'm sure that it will be. I'm sure that Miles Morales isn't too far too far away, honestly, because I'm sure Sony will milk that as soon as they possibly can. I don't even know if they have the rights to do Miles Morales. I know they have Spider Man rights, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, hell, nobody nobody may have Spider Man rights after all the lawsuits, but. Um, they're gonna I don't know. Nice I mean, fat checks. yeah, <laughs> it's going to be like it's going to be what they do. It's going to be like what they did with uh, both Superman and Batman, where they're going to cut the families nice fat checks. And then now every time like before, you like when we watch a Spider-Man movie, it's going to say Spider-Man appears courtesy of, you know, the Ditko family and, you know, and Stan Lee. You know, there's going to be like an extra credit in the beginning of the movie, you know, Spider-Man, you know. The same way, the, the, like Superman, it's like you know, um, oh my goodness, what I, you know, the two guys who did Superman, I forgot the guy's name. I want to say Simon Schuster, but I know that's a bookstore or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, the 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 two guys who Siegel and Siegel and mm-hmm. something or other, the two guys who made, and then the same thing with uh, Batman. In every Batman movie in the beginning, it says you know Batman appears estates of uh, Bob Kane and Bill Finger. You know, so they'll they'll do that. They're gonna cut him a nice fat check. And then once again, every Spider-Man from this point on, every Spider-Man movie from this point on till the eternity is going to say, you know, Spider-Man appears as, you know, Ditko family and Stan, in the estate of Stan Lee, you know, yada, yada, yada. So they're going to, but, uh, let me throw my two cents in there. Like you had mentioned the Sinister Six. Now, case, okay, okay. In this, in this trailer, we have seen Sandman, Electro, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, and the Lizard. That's five right there. Now, spoiler alert for Venom 2. And now, mind you, I, I started watching Venom 2. Uh, how it, how I started watching it is, n- is nobody's business. <laughs> but I was watching it. I didn't get a chance to finish it. Uh, but spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, there is the post credit scenes of, of Venom 2 is Venom sort of like the whole world sort of like warps around the apartment or whatever. And he ends up in the universe where he's looking at Spider-Man, but it's the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, I think, or if I'm not mistaken, there's, there's you know, there's, there's, there's a, a warping effect that, you know, he is no longer in the Venom universe where it's Venom all by himself. Uh, he, he, you know, the, the rumors are that he's being brought into the, you know, I mean, of course people would like it just like Spider-Man. He's brought into the MCU where technically Sony still owns the rights, but Marvel will like make the movies and all Sony has to do is just sit down, shut up and collect the paycheck. But you know, we already have five bad guys in this trailer and there's a sixth one. And what happened in the, in the, at the end of Venom two, there was that weird warping effect, which I didn't get a chance to see yet, but from what I understand, that's what it was like. It went from his apartment to like a slightly different apartment, but now he was in a universe that had an, another established Spider-Man. So if, for if they were to somehow get Venom in this movie also, there would be your Sinister Six. You get Sam and Electro, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Lizard, and Venom. But of course, you know, like you mentioned earlier, they're, they're uh, supposed to be, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, the flying old guy. Um, <laughs> oh my god, you just said his name. Why am I drawing a blank on the, on the, who, the, uh, the Vulture the, is? The Vulture. The Vulture. I don't know, I was like, Dude, you don't know who Vulture is? I, I want to say Buzzard. No, Kevin Costner. Or not Costner, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Conroy. <laughs> Michael wow. Keaton. Michael Keaton, whatever. Michael yeah. Keaton has, uh, yeah, has I'm losing vulture. it. See, yeah, see, see both, where this is what happens when we're late at night. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd be great if, if, if you had the vulture in there also. It'd be great if you had the rhino in there also. But, I mean, I think, you know, with, with the end credit scene at Venom and the five villains we have now seen in this trailer, I think that's your Sinister Six right there. I, I said it here first. Uh, I'm probably not the first person to say it, but I feel like I'm the first. Like I thought of it. I put the put the pieces together. I'm pretty sure there's other people who put those pieces together way before I did. But I think that's your. I think that's because uh, especially at the end of this trailer, you know, like Doctor Strange makes a you know point of saying like, oh, I can't keep them. I can't hold them back or whatever. So I'm wondering if that's you know every other universe kind of you know coming in or at least having a way to a window into this universe which 
I mean, you know, look, I don't want to, I don't want to overreach, but you know, I wouldn't mind if they, were, they showed us an X Men or two. <laughs> but that's that's wishful thinking. Right now, let's deal with Sony. Let's yeah, not, no, let's not worry about think, Fox right now. <laughs> I, I think they're a little far away from X Men. I know that. I know that they're. Well, actually, wait. Are they working? No, they're working on a Fantastic Four. So, okay, so that'll be fun. Too. I mean, between between the blip and crossover multiverse thing Wait, they're gonna they're gonna sneak in next <laughs> but i mean once again let's let me know we already have three spider-mans and six bad guys or five five confirmed and one possible uh sinister six and three spider-man so we, this movie's packed enough as it is we don't need to introduce anybody else in this movie but uh you know so that's you know do, uh, do you have any other I, and i and of course also uh we got to see uh Cla- well I don't know, J. Jonah Jameson, but that's the one from the end of uh, Homecoming. I can't believe I said. I, mean, no I can't home. believe I said. I can't. I can't believe I said Kevin Conroy. I'm like Jesus Christ. What? Kevin Conroy was Batman and Batman. And Michael Keaton was also Batman. So, so that's that's your synapses. That's your train of thought right there. Um, but uh, okay, so oh, and like I said, you know, this is we see J.K. Simmons as uh, J. Jonah Jameson. You know, and once again, it's the J. Jonah Jameson from. You know the last thirty seconds of, of of the last movie, you know, of of Far From Home. But you know, I mean, the fuck, just the fact that they brought back J. Jonah James, which sort of like I think supports my theory that like, yeah, you can get the same actor and they're kind of the same person, but they're not really. They're from like a universe that sort of looks like that universe that we all we've all seen in the movies, but it's just a little off. You know, a couple other decisions have been made. So, um, but I mean, I'm I'm excited to see J. Jonah Jameson. Also, you know, J.K. Simmons is fucking brilliant, and and imagine how he's gonna flip out when he sees three Spider Man. <laughs> he's gonna lose his fucking mind. Which I hope they have a scene where he's now there's three of them, you know, <laughs> or some shit like that. Um, all right, so let's uh, I guess let's move on a little bit with Spider. I mean, well, let's stay with Disney, but um, I still haven't seen Eternals yet. I know. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm hearing okay reviews. Like, you know, I think the fans are loving it, even though the reviews aren't that great. It just, I haven't gotten around to it. I just, you know, I've been, obviously I had a lot on my mind, so I haven't had a chance to really like hit the theaters, but I will see it eventually. It's a, it's a long ass movie, man. I'm, I'm hearing you. that. Yeah. I, I mean, I've watched reviews on it and stuff like that. I even had, I've had like the end credit scene even spoiled and shit like that. But I mean, I'm still going to see it. I mean, I, you know, I'm a fucking fanboy, so I'm, I have to see it. But I think the, the oddly enough, the bigger news, like, I mean, as much as Eternals, you know, was introduced and, 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 and everything that I'm seeing about the Eternals is that they're going to, okay. And this is total speculation and, and, and nothing based on any real fact is that they're going to use the Eternals to almost kind of like justify the actions of Thanos, you know, but like, you know, cause Thanos was sort of a, a, like he was a, I think he's like, you know, he was like an eternal, but then he like he's ugly, so he's kind of like the 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 monsters in the movie. I forgot what they call them, the like the devi the deviants, I think they're called. So uh, or deviations or some shit like that. So I think they're kind of going to try to say that like Thanos was part eternal, part deviation, but that's a whole other speculation, and we'll we'll get to what we're about that when that when they come when they finally make that movie. Um, but I think the 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 other huge news this past past two three days ago was. Uh, Disney Plus, holy shit, just released a whole bunch of fucking TV shows, or the announcement of a bunch of TV shows. I think the biggest in my, well, not the biggest. I mean, the one that blew you my mean, fucking um, mind was X Men '97. Do 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 do. You know, <laughs> with you know, with with you know, uh, when Disney Plus first first came, it was about a year ago. Disney Plus came out because I, I see I see <laughs> posts about it in my memories on Facebook. Um, you know, a lot of people started watching old X, old X Men episodes, and uh, you know, I think that's sort of like I think they took notice of that and said, you know, animation, you know, fucking Marvel's owned by Disney now. <laughs> you know, you have all the fucking animators in the world, and uh, you know, and especially with that style, you know, I mean, I, and not to shit on that style, but it's not exactly a fucking hard thing to do, and not a hard thing to replicate. You know, it's very easy to kind of you know keep those character designs and stuff like that and 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 update it uh from what i understand they they ha- they do have a lot of the voice cast coming back you know and and that that's super exciting and and you know i mean it's one of those things where we had we would have said you know 2 or 3 years ago oh it would have been great if it would be great if they brought back the x men but like kind of continue it and like oh shit here we are 97 where they are literally continuing the show like where it left off and that blows my fucking mind i mean that's the, i mean you know, we're, we're, 
Disney Plus is sort of like throwing a lot of shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, I oh. think I'm super excited. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? I I just forgot about that. Yeah, because the last episode, um, Magneto was the one that was uh, in charge of the X Men. So that's going to be interesting. Um, so, I mean, you're probably going to talk about it too, but then there's going to be a Spider Man animated series. Isn't that Spider Man and his amazing friends? I think was it? Well, no. It, well, it says. It, I mean, the show's technically called uh, Spider Man Freshman Year. Which, oh, okay. which is supposed to be, if I understand correctly, is supposed to be a prequel series to uh, the, the the current Spider-Man. It's like it's like Tom Holland Spider-Man, but it the style is going to look like the '60s comic. Interesting. Which you know is 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 you know which is very interesting. You know, unfortunately, that means we're probably going to have to watch Uncle Ben die one more time. <laughs> the biggest of refre- the biggest refreshing thing is as soon as we got we got this new Spider-Man, and they're like, okay, no. look, we're not going to show Uncle Ben dying yeah. in this one. You, we've already seen it three times, two other two other times. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. In this, in this one, nerdy, you know, um, a young Spider-Man losing his uncle yet again. So one thing that I had that I that I put up on Twitter as well, and I actually shared this on Facebook too. You probably saw it. Was like, so if you're gonna do a new X-Men, where the fuck is my gargoyles? Yeah. And <laughs> and I'm was, like, yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude! Like, come on! Like, you know you want to do this shit. Come on. Mm-hmm. Like I'll take a reboot. I'll fucking take a reboot. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's all. I mean seeing. I think if they see the success of you know, because and 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 you know they they, they rebooted what Ducktales. You know what they think. You know what they're they're working on like a Darkwing Duck. You know they're doing X Men ninety seven. Like you know these dis and especially now that it's Disney slash Marvel. You know I think if X Men ninety seven does well. I think there will be like a kind of like people kind of saying like, okay, let's, what else, what other properties, properties do we have that we don't have to spend an extra penny for and just, you know, just start getting, putting it out there. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, I mean, this has been, I, I hate to, I hate to like smack Disney upside their head, but this has been going on since like the early, the well, I would say, you no, know, no, like the 2010s, so to speak, you know, like, when they brought back like Thundercats, for example, Thundercats did really well. I mean, for a show to do over a million viewers per episode for pretty much every single episode and then rerun on Toonami and for some of their episodes actually do that much people mm-hmm. is, is, is a kind of a big thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, for me, it's more or less like you should be, you should be rebooting everything that you possibly can because more people are going to take your service if you do it that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, I forgot. I, I know there's there they are doing other things. You know, obviously I'm focusing on all the Marvel shit because and that's who I am. But I think Disney Plus is they're 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 coming. You know, they're gonna come out with shit like well, like you're not gonna go a week without something new that you're interested in. You know, not to mention that you know we got the you know the the, the Star Wars you know Book of Boba Fett. You know, we got the Mandalorian season three. Um, you know, they have a couple other Star Wars properties. Well, excuse me, they have a bunch of Star Wars properties. They have like six shows they've announced coming up. You know, the, the one about the, the underworld of Star Wars and shit like that. So, the, you know, they're going to make it to the point where like literally every, at least once a week, you're going to be watching, you know, you're going to be watching Disney Plus to watch the new episode of something. <laughs> you know, whether yeah. it be, you know, Star Wars thing, a Marvel thing, or something from Disney. And of course, uh, Gargoyles was Disney, you know, that's Disney original. That's, that's Disney DNA right there. You know, it, you know, once again, they're an animation. I mean, they do animation. It should be, you know, especially if X-Men 97 does well and gets is well received. I mean, I think, you know, that'll, that'll give them the kick in the ass to kind of, Maybe put their sights on on gargoyles and kind of have that '90s retro, uh, you know, where you know all the kids who grew up with their cartoon are now adults with jobs and could afford streaming services. <laughs> we'll watch a, you know, we'll watch a. Um, but as for the other Marvel things, uh, Moon Knight, which I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I mean, the show looks good. I'm going to give it a watch, of course. Uh, she Hulk, which that's the one I'm I actually like because uh, the the star of the show, she did another show. I forgot the fuck. Where she played like a, she played a she played a girl that was cloned a bunch of times, so she got to be like different characters in the same show. I can't believe I forgot the fucking name. I know her last name. Her name's Ms. Lani. His last name is Ms. Lani. But uh, and I know people are probably screaming at me, but the, the actress of that show is really good. And the show that she was on, where she played, she literally played like you know eight different characters on the show. Uh, that was pretty good. Miss um, Marvel. 
uh, which is, you know, the, the younger Muslim American teenage girl. And of course, you know, that's, you know, it's probably going to be aimed more towards, you know, t- kids, you know, let's, let's get the, the, you know, let's not have to keep kissing the ass of all the, the grown men who like these shows, you know, let's, let's like make shows for the kids. Uh, Miss Marvel, what if season two? Cause you know, what if you could have, you know, you could have a million seasons of what if, because, you know, even though this season of what if, what if they kind of tied up all the episodes together in one shot at the end, they don't necessarily have to do that. That was pretty cool that they did. And, and it'd be, you know, it'd be kind of cute if they did it again, but they don't, you know, what if can just be like a, like a, like a Twilight Zone. You know, none of the episodes have to be connected. Just tell interesting stories about weird you know, deviations, old stories. Echo, which is the, um, Steinfeld that she's going to be in the, the Hawkeye show. Mm-hmm. So she's going to get her own show, but it's a Haley Steinfeld, Bumblebee, and that well, other. um, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, I was going to say too, um, what's her name should probably show up in Hawkeye too. Um, she was, I can't think of the actor's name, but she was in uh, um, Black Widow. She was uh, her sister. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pew. Yeah, so she should be, she should show up in there and try to kill Hawkeye, which probably won't go too far, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll come in as a as a as an enemy, and then they'll make friends. Like you know, you're the guy who killed my sister. It's like oh, I didn't kill your sister. She sacrificed herself, or something like that. Yeah, that's the no, whole. He'll probably start crying and saying, "I wanted to kill myself," and then you know. Yeah, like yeah, I tried to kill myself, and she she threw herself in the you know she pushed me back on the on the ledge, and she jumped or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, if they bring her say a pew in the, in the show, yeah, that's that was a kind of like the whole reason they even brought her into this into movies like to to be the new black widow for the lack of a better term so to be like a fresh uh you know and not that you know not that fucking uh not that uh, uh, uh what's her face is is old in any way shape or form but i think you know you get you know you get these new people and you could pay them less and, <laughs> you know no make them stars. i think it i think it was because obviously they killed black widow off so i mean it made it made sense to make somebody new black widow yeah the new black i mean the plus they had to pay Plus, they had to pay out a lot more money to uh, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson, so. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, so like, yeah, you can have a new Scarlet. You can have a new Black Widow without having Scarlett Johansson. She's the new Black Widow. She's like the sister. Right. Um. Okay. So we'd mentioned uh, Fresh uh, Spider Man Freshman Year, and I Am Groot show, which is interesting. I, I'm wondering what they're gonna do with that. But once again, I think that's gonna be like cutesy for the kids because it's 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 the the graphic for it shows Baby Groot. Ironheart, which sounds fucking interesting because that's the, the, the young black girl who, like, you know, she's a genius and she basically does like what Tony, you know, she, like, she makes her own Iron Man suit, uh, once again, probably for the younger audience, but that's gonna be interesting. And then, um, I, I'm pretty sure that's all of the one, not all of them, but then the last one is, uh, Agatha House of Harkness. Because you know you got Agatha, um, uh, Agatha Harkness, and you know, uh, you know the show showed us uh, flashbacks of back when she was a witch. You know she's like 400 years old or something like that. So you have a lot of creative. You know the last time she was, the last time we saw her, she was sort of like brainwashed and and, and left in the in the town that uh, the Scarlet Witch left behind. So you know she could wake up from that. She could wake up from from you know the the spell, and then you know we have tons of history. So that's going to be a, an interesting. You know, and especially that, you know, now that they had established a world in WandaVision, you know, the, that show already has a leg up on, you know, people love uh, the actress in that show. I, I, you know, I like her also. So um, that's, you know, that's going to be interesting. That I'm pretty sure that's all the shows that they announced, but there might be more. If I miss them, I'm sorry. A um, few, few, la- few more things. Um, have you seen that? Have you, have you seen that show at all? It's called Inside Job on, uh, on Netflix. Inside Job. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's no, a, I don't, I don't, I don't use Netflix. Oh, okay. Well, it's, I mean, it's a cartoon. It, it, the animation style looks, it, like, it looks like, it looks like it, it's, uh, uh, Rick and Morty, like, it kind of has that Rick and Morty style to it. Um, it's not a Rick and my, it's not a Rick and Morty, uh, ripoff in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I mean, it does, it has to do with, like, there's one company that, like, of all the conspiracies in the world, like, you know, the, the fake moon landing and, and Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot and, 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 you know, the hidden city of Atlantis and the presidents under control, like, you know, the Illuminati and all this shit. It's like this one company that kind of handles all of that. And it's, you know, and it's a comedy and it kind of has that weird sci-fi uh, thing to it, which I don't know if you remember, but, you know, I, I, over the pandemic, I kind of, you know, I threw myself into a project. 
I, you know, I kind of made my own little bullshit cartoon, <laughs> you know, over the pandemic where, you know, it's called Veil Corp, V-E-I-L Corp. And, uh, you know, it's so weird, you know, I put out, you know, my, I put out my cartoon pretty much on my birthday in June of this year. I never heard of Inside Job. It's a brand new show on Netflix or whatever. But like Veil Corp was sort of like my, like when I watch Inside Job, it sort of reminds me of like, this is a lot of kind of like what I wanted my show to be like. Um, maybe not about conspiracies, but just sort of like you know, a company that sort of has its hand in a lot of like evil things. But like, you know, you kind of take that. They're so evil, but they also have to like work in an office building and shit like that. So, you know, not for nothing, you know, inside job, you know, you guys should give me a job or something. Cause I kind of put out my own pilot by myself that I fucking funded for myself for like $700. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, give me a job. I need money. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, if you want to check out Veil Corp, just go and look for Two Strangers, One Podcast, Veil Corp, V-E-I-L-C-O-R-P. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Halloween Kills, the part two of the, the, the no, well, no, that would be the third movie. And like, the third movie, if you count the first one that came out in the seventies, but it's really like the tenth movie in the whole, you know, but they, you know, they, they kind of throw out all the other movies of the, the Halloween. A lot of people hated Halloween Kills. Holy shit, these diehard fans hated it. I watched it and I was like, eh, it's not that bad. <laughs> and maybe because I'm not a diehard fan, that maybe that's why I, I don't, I'm not as invested as some people are, but you know, it's an interesting movie and like, you know, there's a, it kind of shows like a town has like this weird fucked up mob mentality and, and you know, Michael Myers like, killed a bunch of people years ago. And I mean, it's kind of weird because if some guy killed three or four people 30 years ago, no one would really give a shit, you know, but, it, for the franchise, I th- it, I didn't think it was a bad movie. I I enjoyed it, but once again, you know the diehard fans are like, oh my god, it's the biggest piece of shit ever made. Um, I saw Dune on HBO Max, the new Dune. It's pretty good. Uh, you know, not a movie to like if you're looking like for a traditional action kind of movie. It's not you know, I mean, it has action like at the very end. You know, it's it's more like epic and it has to do with you know politics and royal families and, and you know betrayal and you know, ch- the chosen one and all this shit uh i actually enjoyed it you know you know the the first well not the first dune but you know the dune that came out in like the 80s was kind of a ridiculous movie and i've seen it years and years and years ago and i kind of forgot about most of it uh but rewatching the this dune sort of reminded me of a bunch of stuff from the last time so it's it's i mean obviously you know don't go into the movie thinking you're going to see the next Marvel film, you know, not this, you know, like this big action adventure. It's not, and it's not Star Wars, but you know, it, 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 you know, if you get yourself in the right headspace, it's actually a pretty good movie. Um, uh, Big Mouth season five, you know, just giving that a shout out because, you know, I like Big Mouth. I, I, I think this is the weakest season so far. Um, but I think they, you know, now next year they're going to do, or next season it's going to be the, the what they call human resources where it's going to be like it's a show just all about like the hormone monsters and uh, the shame monsters and you know all the crazy monsters from the show in their world and not and, and then just sort of my last note was uh you know, I got I went to you know this the same weekend that my father's funeral was there was a thing called the the Brooklyn Horror Con it was a horror convention if you want to call it a convention it was a fucking like it was like a you know <laughs> It was like this one floor of a warehouse, and it was basically a bunch of people just selling shit. It wasn't really like a Comic Con, you know. I mean, of course, most of the smaller cons are that, you know, like oh, meet this, you know, actor from like a 1970 show that no one really gives a shit about or whatever. Um, and I had promised my daughter we were gonna go, and so we were going down to New York City that weekend anyway, like the weekend my we went down for my father's funeral service, and um, so I had already kind of like you know, was already headed in my head to go down to New York City then. And, uh, and, you know, even though we were going to my father's funeral, I mean, you know, my daughter kind of had it in her head. And once again, she's 11, you know, it's kind of hard for her to like, you know, no, we're not going to do that thing I promised you we're going to go to months ago because grandpa died, you know, I, and, and, you know, and once again, I'm a single dad. I'm sort of like in this weird position where, you know, I want my daughter to be happy. And, you know, and I don't, and even my dad with his beliefs and everything was, I don't think my dad would have opposed the idea of like, okay, you know, you could take Raven to a, you know, a horror convention, 
you know, like, you know, the, the, the world doesn't stop because I passed away sort of a deal. So I, I, I took Raven to this thing called the Brooklyn Horror Con. And I got a chance to meet uh, Dana DeLorenzo, and uh, most people know her as uh, she plays this character, Kelly Maxwell, on the Ash vs. the Evil Dead show. That It was originally on Showtime, but now it's on it's on Netflix. It's a great show. If you like, you know, it's, it's a continuation of the uh, the Evil Dead movies, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 1 and 2, even though Evil Dead 1 is sort of like, you know, Evil Dead 1 is kind of a shitty movie. Evil Dead 2 is funny. Army of Darkness is obviously a brilliant movie. And then uh, the... Ash versus the Evil Dead is a continuation. You know, it's like three seasons, two or three seasons, and they're really, they're really fucking good. Um, so I got a chance to meet her, and I had a Funko Pop of hers, and she signed it for me, and I got a picture with her, and we talked for a little while, and and she's like super cool, and she's super hot. And then like if if anybody knows the, the, the when Craig Ferguson used to have his uh, night show, the the night, late night talk show, she was Beth, uh, the CBS executive or whatever like she you know she was she would always come on the show and kind of like you know you know like in a business suit and glasses but you know kind of that sexy you know businesswoman type and and uh you know it's easy to fall in love with her uh, i got a chance to meet her and, and even though I, I i had her do a cameo for me one of those you know you hire someone to say hi to you or whatever so, and she did a cameo for me in early 2020 and you know and, and then i kind of use that as my inspiration and also to kind of finish my project the veil corp thing and then I told her, and I said, "Oh yeah, you know, you did a video for me and about finishing a project, and yeah." And then so, oh, she was so like proud of me that I did I finish my project, so that was kind of cool. Um, so that's all my nerdy news for the most part. Oh, and that, oh, well, then we'll get into the fucking Astro World thing. That was, what a clusterfuck that was with the what's his face, Travis Travis Scott. And let me tell you, I've been to I I've seen Metallica thirty times in concert. Easily. Not to mention, you know, other heavy metal bands, Korn, Slipknot, Slayer, uh, Sepultura, Black Sabbath, Megadeth, Biohazard. I've, I've been to tons of shows and, you know, you know, and I've been into some fucking, I've been into some pretty fucking wicked mosh pits where, you know, people have gotten hit and stuff like that. I had a friend of mine that he got hit so hard in his chest that like he had surgery a couple months earlier and he got hit so hard, like it reopened his scar on his chest and he started, he was bleeding like it looked like he was fucking dying. He wasn't, he was okay. He took him to the, to the emergency room after the show and it was sort of like, and it was funny because the emergency room was filled with people from the Metallica show, <laughs> but you know, to, to, to see these senseless deaths and people acting like fucking animals and shit like that. Not to mention that who the fuck brings a 10 year old to like a hip hop show? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and exactly. I, that was just such, that's such a, you know, you know, and then, you know, and if you do bring a 10 year old to a show, you stay in the back. You know, if it's a general admission sort of thing, you don't go in a, you don't go anywhere where there's a crowd where, you know, shit can happen and pop off with your fucking kid right there. Um, there's and let me tell you, there's a whole fucking thing online right now where the online conspiracy, like it's a satanic ritual, and if you look at the stage, the stage looks like an upside down cross, and and you know there's there's, there's and and there's parts of the show that look like angels were being turned into demons and shit like that. So there, there's this whole online conspiracy that it's like a satanic ritual and they needed victims. And, I mean, I mean, of course, you know, without I don't want to disrespect the people that died or anything like that. But also, once again, you know, a little better parenting would have told you you don't take a fucking 10 year old to a hip hop show. You know, I wouldn't take my daughter to a metal show. And if I did take my daughter to a metal show, you know, if you're going to be in a general admission area, you kind of hang out in the areas that sort of you're not going to be by the stage. These people, oh, they're bum rushing the stage, no pushing and surging forward. Well, you don't take a 10 year old to the front of a show of a hip hop show. If you want to take them to the show, you take them to the back where, you know, the areas where there's a personal bubble of space around you and stuff like that. You don't bring them into the fucking heart of the crowd where if something like this does happen, you know, someone doesn't get killed. And, you know, and, you know, I, I, I'd never even heard of fucking Travis Scott. I, I think earlier this year, there was like a Travis Scott, uh, happy me on oh, a happy excuse me a travis scott meal at mcdonald's and it was like a commercial with like and it was and the commercial was like a travis scott toy like you know not that that they were offering at mcdonald's i'm saying the toy the commercial itself was like stop motion animated or whatever i was like i never heard of this motherfucker and they're like you know they're like oh you know fifty thousand people went to the show or some ridiculous number and i'm like was he that famous am i that out of touch that i don't know who the fuck this guy is you know and then and they were saying oh he didn't know what was going on from what i understand it was a fucking ambulance in the middle of the crowd you know so 
you know, the, these people died because they had shitty taste in music. I mean, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to fucking put it like that. You know, I, I, he- I've heard one of his songs because I was fucking morbidly curious on, like, you know, the, this guy must be great. I listened to the shit and it was, it sounds like everything else today. And maybe because I'm an old man, whatever, but it didn't, it didn't seem like some ground, didn't sound like anything groundbreaking. And maybe I'm just, I'm old and out of touch that I have that opinion, but. It was a pretty fucked up situation. And once again, I've been to plenty of metal shows. There's never been a death at any of the shows that I've ever been at. You know, just, I don't know. People, you know, when you go to a show and people fall down and stuff like that, you know, people pick you, pick you at a metal show. If you fall down, there's 10 fucking people around you that will pick you back up. You know, people getting trampled and shit like that. Um, all right. That's, that's it. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm good. All right. So let's wrap this up. That's, that's what, what she, she said. said. <laughs> Please visit two strangers one podcast.net and dot com. You can find links for everything. You can find links to our iTunes. If you have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can download us there on the iTunes app. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can, uh, listen to us on the Stitcher app for Android devices. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R, the Stitcher app for Android devices. Um, and like what I do is, well, my life has changed recently, but, you know, uh, I used to put it on listen later and available offline where you download them while you're in a Wi-Fi spot. So while you're out and about, you're not killing your data. You're not killing your battery. You can listen to all your podcasts that you like listening to. And <clears> of <throat> course, all the great podcasts that I listen to, including Paul's other baby, the Tanami Faithful podcast are available on Stitcher. Um, if you don't have any of those apps, you want to go right to the source. You can find us on SoundCloud. Just search for Two Strangers One Podcast. I make every episode downloadable. So for whatever reason you don't want to use a subscription service and you just want to download one specific episode or anything like that, you can go to SoundCloud and do that. Just uh, go and search for it and download. Uh, if you want to write to us, and I did check the episode, but I did check before the episode. No Oscar letter, so Oscar's still uh, not participating with the show anymore. He's still alive. Um, you can write to us. At two strangers one podcast at gmail.com, all spelled out, two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can like us, you can, uh, like our page and share our page. Just go on Facebook and search for two, you know, facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast, which is our page. And then there's the two strangers one podcast network group, which you can join also. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't set up a Patreon. One day, I swear, I promise I'll set up a Patreon. When, when things get a little more settled in my fucking life, I'll set up a Patreon. And, uh, we'll probably, hopefully that'll mean we'll put out more content. And, uh, you know, think about it. Even if we did one, a dollar an episode, <laughs> you'd only be paying a dollar a month. Cause we only do one episode a month now. Um, but even though, uh, even without a Patreon, it takes two seconds to like the episode, like our page, share the episode, share the page on your social medias and you can find us on twitter at stranger podcast um you can find old episodes on youtube just search on youtube for two strangers on podcast so you can listen up to here we are nine and a half years worth of podcasts uh, in april of next year we'll hit 10 our 10 year anniversary uh you can find my audio books uh you can find the audio book for my for my my second novel odd i see a tale from the road you can find uh, the electronic music that I make under the name XLNYC. All of that is available on YouTube. Just search for the Two Strangers One Podcast channel. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, you can see the pilot for my cartoon, Veil Corp, which hopefully one day will be an actuality. And you can say, I remember when that was just a, a shittily animated, uh, stupid cartoon on YouTube, and now it's a big thing on Netflix or something. And uh, that's all I can think of right now. I acquiesce the floor to you, sir. Well, as usual, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pascrillo. You can email me, paulpascrillo at tunamifaithful.com. And uh, like Chris indicated, you can listen to me on the Tsunami Faithful podcast. That's podcast.tunamifaithful.com to listen to all of our episodes. So, yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, even though we are, uh, well, I'm certainly still like in a in a weird period of mourning and stuff like that uh we certainly hope you enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording thank you for listening to two strangers one podcast i'm chris i'm paul don't be a stranger peace we're out and even in the darkest of times you should still you should still you should be fapping and we're out or not or not <laughs> at least trust all right. all right here we go man go ahead you want you double here? jackpot what is it it is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs>
Look at her. <laughs> that broke that fucking cold little look <laughs> here. He's like, hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. In punny. But. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Colon smells real lovely with an original idea. Is this? I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. (laughs) Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. L-U-L-U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen's not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! I Come like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know, you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. At Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool.